Hello, this is the second of two videos that capture a conversation on change and loss in the time of COVID-19. The first included thoughts around identifying what we're experiencing and feeling, and ideas about how we can empower ourselves to continue in this challenging time. This video shares thoughts on how we can navigate all of this change and loss in tangible ways. So let's get back to the conversation. So I think there's a it's helpful to, to think about, to name the things that are coming up and, and to start kind of addressing, like, what are some different responses that we could have? Um, and I think one of the questions that I have is kind of this, like, now what? So so now, like, how do we navigate this? We, we're identifying all of these potential things that could be coming up for us and all of this change and, and loss, um, but how do we actually navigate and, and move through it? What is okay. that? What, what would that look like? Yeah, well, Kristen, that's probably the most important question because <laughs> it's one thing to go, yeah, you're right, but what do I do? Mm -hmm. you know? um, so that leads us to another basic truth that to mourn, and mourning is giving external expression to the internal sort of energy that's been built up. It's like a tea kettle that's been uh, on, the, on the hot pad mm -hmm. and it's growing in intensity because the molecules <laughs> are expanding, but it needs to have an outlet so that they can settle down. You know, the steam needs to be let out. And mourning allows the steam out and it restores balance. Mourning helps us restore balance. Um, and uh, the feeling guilty will ease up, the, the pain or the discomfort will ease, the, the, the challenges with concentration will ease with time, particularly if we find some activities or rituals or expressions that allow us to mourn, to give voice to what we've just been talking about. And that gives us the balance, it takes the, the intensity of the, of the steam off. So um, there are several ways we can cope. Gary, uh, you wanna start with that? Well, I, I think the, the first thing is, I go back to the beginning, is to not judge. There is no right or wrong way to do this. This is a unique experience for each of us. And each new thing that comes our way is, is unique. So acknowledge it and, and don't, don't fall into the trap of should or should not. Um, give yourself a break and, yeah. um, and suspend judgment a little bit. Yeah. We're That's trying a to do that. The that right. certainly warrants the repeating, Gary, because that, that is probably very foundational. Um, sometimes people feel that they should, talking about the shoulds, sometimes people feel that if they're processing their loss properly, they should be crying about it, you know, getting it out. And that's kind of dangerous to think that way, because crying is not an indicator necessarily, or a guaranteed indicator of processing loss. It might be an expression of relief or even joy. Uh, so crying is natural, but it could mean many different things. The key is, if you feel an impulse to cry, give yourself permission. Go for it. Yeah, and then, and then name what it was about. Write down what it was about and honor that because it was something meaningful to you. So that would be one. Um, Kristen, in your work as an RA, I imagine there's all kinds of coping things that you you know, work with the students on. Um, yeah. Um, so the with the, our students, one of the things that we've been trying to address and for myself too, thinking about um, in my role supervising those RAs, looking at like how, how are we approaching our work? And I think that's one of the spaces where at least personally, I know that I've I have been shooting myself um, around like I should be working to certain amounts or I should be producing certain outcomes like I quote unquote normally did um, or have in the past and trying to balance that like giving myself permission and, and trying to encourage students like giving them permission as a supervisor and trying to help them give themselves permission to not do that. <laughs> it's okay that work looks different right now. And it's, it of course it will. Um, and I think there's, again and practicing that non-judgment and making space for however we're approaching things and 
practicing asking for help more often and being aware of where am I at, where am I at and approaching my, my work with whoever I'm working with. And some of the things that we do are, are critical work that needs to get done within a certain time. And it's okay if you're not the one that can do it, but asking for help or naming it and passing that on to maybe somebody who does have more capacity um, doing those things. Kind of on the flip side, um, I'm someone who's kind of been through a process of grief a couple of times. And I've found throughout that, that working can also be a distraction technique for better or worse. <laughs> like sometimes you don't have any energy or capacity to do processing or like I've cried 17 times and I want to just not cry for a little bit. <laughs> so work can be a distraction. And one of the things I've learned is trying to balance, like naming that for myself of, am I doing this to kind of like go through and practice or just to give myself something else to do for now and that can be okay too but trying to name to when when, when am I pushing off something or, or stifling or um, those kinds of things maybe responses or crying or things like that that I do or sh should again <laughs> really be getting to um and versus when I'm, and like maybe it's a competing I feel like I should work which is kind of overriding I also should be making space for myself. <laughs> um, and similar, I feel a similar sense uh, in a different space too around like I'm very sedentary right now. And I feel like a lot of big should that's coming up for me is around like the, this idea of how much I should be moving. Um, and even just like walking between my office and apartment and meetings and stuff like that. And now I am just sitting all day. Um, and I'm walking to my kitchen, which is right over there and back, um, or my bedroom, which is right over there and back. And so I'm trying to like process that too of moving my body in a way that feels good and healthy as a way to um, help release stress and, and just be present with myself and exercising as a, like to get my heart rate up because it feels good when I do that versus a Am I exercising because of that, because this feels good and I want to, or am I exercising because I feel like I should? <laughs> um, and that's a, another thing that I'm trying to balance um, within all of that. So working and exercising, you need to be mindful of why you're doing it and how mm -hmm. much you're doing it so that it's helpful in whatever capacity as Absolutely. opposed to working against you. Yeah. And they yeah. could, it has a potential to be either. It has a either potential way. to be really positive and productive yeah. and a potential to be really not. Yeah. 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 So, well, reading, re reading is, well, Gary? Avoiding escapism mm -hmm. and still engaging in perhaps yeah. new activities that uh, are meaningful. Is yeah. it giving you a momentary reprieve, a respite that you need? That's fine. Is it helping you regenerate? That's good. But if it's, a real escapism in the in this, or if you're doing it too much and it becomes an ism, workaholism, or you know, you can over exercise to where you're hurting your body. Um, that's not good. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. reading can be uh, another way. I I I I find that both reading to be more informed about what I'm experiencing is helpful, but also reading just to escape. I like historic murder mysteries. You know, set in a certain fifth century Irish context or something, you know, you get all that cultural stuff. Um, but a balance, it, again, it's why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. um, praying and meditating becomes an obvious one. Gary, uh, how do you? Yeah, I, I, many people are more familiar with some mindfulness techniques. Um, that's, that's really become um, popular or in vogue in our society. And um, this is the ultimate opportunity to be mindful, to, to look outside, to look at the sky, to appreciate the blossoms of spring, um, to, to take some time to focus on your breathing. Yeah. All the excuses people have for not doing any kind of meditation or mindfulness have really been lifted. Yeah, you got the time now. Well, and if you don't know how, it doesn't also matter what your tradition is. If you're not religious, you find someone that teach a mindful technique. If you are religious and you're Buddhist, someone else, but I can also teach people meditation exercises for Christians, or you mm -hmm. could do some that would be fitting for Jewish. Uh, you know, there are always techniques that can fit who, whatever your worldview. 
for for Muslims, their their prayer five times a day. Absolutely. And it's Ramadan time for Jews. Um, praying three times a day is is um, the norm, and and to actually take the time to do that can be a, a very powerful. Yes, a prayer can be a way of um, not only release, letting you calm, but communicate, feeling like you're not alone. I I, I put on a little shawl. You, in the Jewish tradition, have the prayer shawls as a way of creating my own little sacred space, and then feeling like that's hugging me in you know, some way. You know, and, so. and it can invoke the, the sense of gratitude yeah, yeah. for what we do have as opposed to focusing on what we don't. Right. And the, exor- the breathing exercises that go with many of these are very important for our body, for our ox- oxygenation, and also to calm our vagus nerves, which are important. To, it's important to do that when you're facing traumatic things or, or stressful things. Um, that, that's helpful. And the online resources are abundant. For, Absolutely. For meditation, guided meditation, they're just, and lots of free apps out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't be shy. Yeah. Um, an obvious coping mechanism is talking. You know, talking to be processing it or talking just to regenerate your spirit, you know? And part of talking is um, just feeling connected. And that's important, uh, especially with someone who will understand and, and have that non judgmental foundation. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different ways that, one of the things that I'm thinking about is like there's so many different modes that that can happen in too, like talking um, in person may not be an option, but like what we're doing now via Zoom or whatever other platforms. There's tons of video chat platforms, um, but even just texting or leaving messages uh, or phone calls, classic phone calls, those kinds of things. But even just like little messages and chat too, or, or but being like mindful of what you're doing. I think a lot of that are being intentional in what you're doing. Like I am intentionally trying to reconnect with these people. I think that's that's an important aspect of why are you reaching out? What if, what's your intention behind that? Um, and are you doing it like, again, that why are you doing it kind of checking in I yeah. think is important too. And, and that's critical, Kristen, you hit it right on the head, the intention of that. Um, sometimes we carry with us uh, some agitation over what's happening. And I sometimes find that doing a resentment inventory is helpful as a coping mechanism, where I just sit down with pen and paper and I write down anything I have a resentment about. It could be that it's windy today and I wanted to go for a walk, so, but it's going to bother my sinuses. Or it could be that I no longer have the opportunity to be with certain people in class to, to share. Or it could be that you know my parents are struggling keeping their jobs. Or, I mean, or it could be my shirt shrunk when my brother put it in the dryer when it shouldn't have been put in the dryer. I mean, it could be anything, but just purge yourself of the things that are that you have resentment about and then just ritually you know maybe go outside and put it in a little can and burn it just let it go let it go and you might have to do that more than once but there's a there's a relief that happens in getting it outside of yourself you know naming it and purging it and having a little ritual getting rid of it um resentment have inventories can be very helpful finding humor in the midst of this can be really critical. Um, Four years ago, my late wife was in the hospital uh, facing the end of her life. Uh, It was unexpected and we were struggling with that. And she was on a ventilator and couldn't talk. Uh, She had to mouth what was going on and uh, give me nonverbal indicators. And I thought she said to me, I wanna die. And I thought, oh my, you know, that, that hit hard. Uh, but I said, okay, David, you know enough professionally. Ask her again to see if she can convey that more intentionally, more with more intensity so to make certain you got it right. So I said, I want to understand, honey, what you just said. Make certain I heard you right. So can you try to convey it again, and I'll try to read you better. So she put a lot of energy in it and got it out and as best she could. And uh, I looked at her and I said, did you just tell me you want a Diet Pepsi? And she starts going like this. 
And so I went from wah to boom, you know, in a matter of 30 seconds. And we laughed as best that she could laugh at that time. But it was a moment of grace in the midst of a hard time. And humor can give us grace in the midst of these times. And we, we need to be giving ourselves permission to laugh. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, Thank you, David, for <laughs> sharing that very personal story. Um, I, I have done quite a bit of studying in the Jewish tradition about humor as a response to trauma. And there's a great Yiddish expression that says, if I didn't laugh, I would cry. So, so laughter is not minimizing suffering. It's a coping mechanism. And in light of that expression, both of those options are okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. What about journals, Gary? Do you keep journals? I am the world's worst journaler. I wish I had a, 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 a digital mic so I could keep my journal verbally. I, I don't. People who do, I am in awe of, and they find it tremendously valuable. So if you kept a journal before, keep it rocking, because this will be historic. Your journal during this time will speak to your children, God willing, and your grandchildren. It will be a document for time and for you. So, so if that's your gig, embrace it, love it, and do it. Yeah. Another thing that is important is, and, and you could do this with some of the things we've been talking about, is to create personal rituals. Rituals aren't just exclusive domain of organizations. Um, personal rituals are important because rituals give us a container of safe space. They have a beginning and an end. And you name and you control when the beginning is and when the end is. Uh, it could be writing in a journal. It could be listening to a piece of music. It could be looking through a, a photo album. The key is whatever the ritual is, going for a run, drawing, whatever. Whatever it is, it, it, to, to be effective, you need to offer to the ritual the emotions that are going on inside of you, the, think that you're, the internal thoughts that are going on inside of you and let the ritual become a way of giving voice or having internal conversation, but also permission to let go with the knowledge that when the ritual is over, however you've set that boundary, it's also a way to say you you can stop now, okay? You, you don't have to feel like the dam's gonna break and keep bursting and overflowing. You can stop now. And so a ritual gives you that safe container where you can honor your thoughts, your feelings, your questions, your laughter, your tears, and then let go of it. It's like taking the steam off the, the tea kettle that I was talking about. Um, so find a personal ritual and that can be uh, very helpful um, for processing loss. Um, another one is reminiscing. Reminiscing about things that have happened and in a way that blesses you. And make the distinction between reminiscing and ruminating. Mm. Because if you're ruminating over something, then you're getting fixated in a way that's not helping you. It's, it's, it's getting you stuck. But if reminiscing helps you to laugh and remember, and makes you think, you know, I need to call that person. You know, because I remember when we did this. Well, okay, don't just remember it. Let it be an impetus to call them. So you connect. That can be helpful. Music can be good too. Gary, you're you're a cantor as well as a rabbi. Cantor, I'm a rock and roller, David. Oh well, yeah, that's right. You're a deadhead. I'm a deadhead amongst <laughs> other things. The, the one a litmus test of my own well-being is I've told my friends when we talk on the phone, ask me what I'm listening to. Because if I'm not, it's not a good sign. Keeping music going all the time is critical. Whether it's from your phone, I use Alexa, 
I, I say play Gary's COVID-19 playlist and man, do I have some good songs on there. So, so dial it COVID up. COVID-19 playlist? <laughs> Alexa, has, yeah, I made that playlist. Okay, it, send it my way. <laughs> Will do. The, the beauty is imbuing yourself or your environment with music, with your favorite music, with music you've never heard before even, is really valuable and can can be a real game changer. Uh, yeah. It certainly is uh, my key to well-being. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the most important thing for me personally. Yeah, I would agree. Chris, I imagine it's that way for you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things we actually did with our staff, um, I remembered back when I was an RA, one of the things we did is at the end of the year, everybody would share a song and we would make a CD of it. Um, I it wasn't in the tape days, it was in the CD days. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we would do that. And I was just thinking with the other um, area directors about something we could do with our current staff. So we um, made a Google Doc and people put in their just songs that they wanted to share with each other. And we shared it to all of our staff. And it's all sorts of different genres and whatnot. But again, it's kind of that, like, how are we sharing experiences? How are we connecting with people? And it's exposing people to music they've never heard before, but also there's some classic songs on there that's like, yes, I haven't heard that song forever. Well, you, it's such you a could, great song. <laughs> you could, if you did something like that, you could even include your the story behind why it's important. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, so we have little amazing. notes on it and stuff like that. So that's been a really great way for us to connect. And it kind of makes me think of another thing of like what, like thinking about well, who are your support people and how are you connecting with them? And if that is like, um, like Gary, when you're talking about having like telling your people, when you talk to me, make sure you're checking with what I'm listening. Like who are your support people? What are kind of your signs that you're doing well, or maybe you are going off um, your kind of healthier course, telling those to the people around you, setting up like regular check-ins of like building your own little support networks and, and kind of establishing those of like, what does this look like in this time? And if we set up event times like collectively again uh, whatever media you choose but coming together and maybe running through your resentment inventories and letting them go together um, but having like that space who are your people who are you connecting with how are you being present with each other with whatever is happening of I feel like I have too much time or I feel like I don't have any time at all or I feel like I'm doing this or I'm not doing this or like here are all the ways that things are changing and I'm having these reactions to it but how are you who, who are you sharing that with and like how can yeah. you if they're structuring or scheduling um those regular check-in times could i think is a strong thing as well planning Absolutely. our community in it that gives you a real strong anchor mm -hmm. and it gives you hope and all kinds of things so christian you asked us how we navigate these times mm -hmm. and we've given quite a long list of <laughs> ways to do that it's not an exclusive list mm -hmm. by any means but it's some suggestions um they're all mechanisms of coping that are healthy but we always have to keep in mind that there are unhealthy mechanisms as well, unhealthy ways that we think we're coping. Uh, anything to the extreme can become unhealthy. Overeating, uh, smoking, drugs, alcohol, even work or exercise to the extreme can be unhealthy. Uh, isolation as opposed to solitude can, can sometimes um, lead to a, a struggle. Um, the key is, what do the people listening to this think works for them? And so we've asked some questions uh, that might help them now think about what we've said and process and take the next step for themselves. Um, like our questions, and I, I think, Kristen, you're going to have a slide that shows this, but uh, my effective coping mechanism right now, my, uh, mechanisms right now are, and then fill in the blank. Or um, right now, destructive mechanisms I try to avoid are, and then fill in the blank. Right now, my nurturing support people or my uh, nurturing resources are, and then fill in the blank. And then I, uh, right now, I rely most upon what? Fill in the blank. Or my anchors are what? Fill in the blank. And then finally, potential strategies fitting for me at the moment are, and, and that kind of helps them identify um, their anchors, their support, and their next steps. We hope they'll do that. Yeah. And my, my greatest hope is that <laughs> this presentation, we've been able to provide some ideas, some 
motivation, some insights, um, both to normalize what we're feeling and to, to think outside the box about what our opportunities and options are for staying well in, in all that that means um, through this new time, a time like none of us have experienced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, stay well, stay hopeful. <laughs> yes. Um, and that kind of brings me to our wrap up in a sense of this is, this is something that at least for a while will be a part of our lives. Um, whether or not we're in this kind of, at least I'm in Oregon, so we have our stay home orders right now. So we're going to be in that for a bit, but even in our aftermath, this is something that we'll be processing that'll be a part of our cultural narrative for a while. Um, so this is, that's something kind of broadly, and it's also an interesting balance between this day-to-day -day things are changing, but I'm also like this kind of magnitude that we're looking at. Um, and so it's something that at least the three of us are going to keep thinking about how, how do we still case, like stay engaged in this conversation and, and how we're processing and things like that. So we're going to continue thinking about that and looking at, um, like you were talking about, the creative ways that we can respond. If that means um, looking at maybe more connection spaces or spaces for conversations and doing some of those checking in with people and support, um, those kinds of things. But we'll, I'll be posting and including in this at the end some resources, some local resources uh, for folks to utilize and our contact information. If anybody who is watching has any thoughts or things that they would want to see or like to see, please let any of us know, because we'll be continuing to look at and brainstorm our ideas, but we'd love to hear from anybody else if somebody really wants to have something particular out of any of this that we've talked about, um, we'd love to have that information. I don't know if any of you, if either of you have any other closing words. Just to thank you Kristen, <laughs> for hosting this and initiating these thoughts and uh, for the good work you do. And my dear friend, Gary, uh, <laughs> I wish I was with you at that lake right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was at that lake right now. <laughs> thank you both so much. And thank you to everyone watching as well. <laughs>